An important start to the day. Get some nutrition. Thanks for that, Norm. Oh, you bet, buddy. <laughs> so we have the whole crew here with one addition. Our new friend David came with his brandy new Power Plenum in 725. It is not zeroed or tuned, so we're gonna hook that up right now. get a baseline see where this gun's shooting and it is reportedly around 800 that's what david said we'll see what we got right now 791 it's quiet even inside it's quiet yeah. 791 <laughs> so it's a little bit consistent so we have the regulator set right at 100 that's how it came from utah air oh speaking of which Utah Air Guns and us had a conversation, and this is going to be cool. If you use promo code WHISKEYUA with any scope or rifle purchase, they're going to send you a free thing of scope, uh, scope stickers. So it's a little gesture of thank you for your business and thanks for watching us. It's going to be pretty awesome. So it's Whiskey, W-H-I-S-K-E-Y with U-A. There's no space. Just put that in when you check out or when you call. And those guys are going to send you some free scope stickers. So, pretty cool. So, anyway, first thing we're going to do here is up our rag, or I'm sorry, our hammer. Because we want to know if we can keep the rig as low as it is, great. And if we can't, um, then we'll up it a little bit. But the first way to know is by increasing some hammer tension. And you don't want to go crazy. Um, we're going to do, actually, hang on a sec. Don't adjust it with the gun cot. Only idiots do that, like myself. So we're gonna, do, <laughs> we're gonna go like that, and we'll do it one more time. And why not go one more? Because we wanna see if there's a difference. And we're only talking about like eighth and quarter turns here. So now that that's done, we're gonna put the bag back in, and we'll see if we've gained any few per second. Fire it again. All right, so we've actually lost a little bit, which is uh, common when the hammer is hitting a little bit too hard for the reg pressure. So the next thing to do is take up the reg pressure. All right, so we've got our Allen key fitted. We're gonna go counterclockwise to raise the pressure a little bit. We're gonna watch the pressure gauge here. You on it? You can see it moving already. Does not take a big adjustment on the screw to let more air in. So I'd say we're at about 110 now. We don't think that's enough, but we do want to show you guys what adjustments make what impact. And now we're going to see 840. 840 from a 10 bar change. 842. Nice. All right, so we're at 842 now. We're going to up it a little bit more. All right, so let's take it up to 120. There's a little bit more on the turn. And what we want to see is consistency, yes, but we're looking for at least 900 feet per second. So we get a little bit of uh, BC improvement. We'll fight the wind a little bit better. A lot of times it takes the reg a couple shots to really settle in, so I'm gonna fire like four or five and see if we get a change. 
Um, one thing that I totally forgot to do, because we were sitting here chatting about a million other things, is take a look at the valve. I think we might actually already be there. Hang on a second. So, yeah, we're at two and a half lines right now. And what we usually do is take it to the fourth line, where it is now, have it all the way open, go about 20 feet per second higher than we want, and then back it down. We usually end up at the third line and the gun's in harmony. But, you know, we're off our game a little bit today. <laughs> Got a whole lot of farm work going on. And, uh, really off. Hell is away. All right, so let's see what we got. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I believe now that that's where it wants to be for that. So we're gonna again take that um, hammer spring tension up. So we let the tension off the hammer spring. Now we're gonna get in here and we'll do one turn, two turns three turns and make sure that I still have adjustability here. Yeah, okay. It's, it's on max, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. 921. So we can give her a little more hammer spring, I think, and we'll see what we get there. And of course, as we're tightening this, the moment that it stops giving us uh, more feet per second, we know that we either have to take the reg back up higher, or we've just hit the max of the gun, but we're nowhere, nowhere even near the max of the gun right now, so not concerned about that. Roll. 919. I was gonna say that one sounded big time. All right, so we are out of ammo, so we'll get some loaded up here. Now, if you guys haven't seen these, you either don't watch our channel or you're living under a rock. These are the speed loaders that um, Norm from my channel and Steve from Aragon Evolution and Earlis from Orion the Iguana Hunter developed. They're awesome. You get one in there to pin the mag, then you line this pin up with the speed loader on the magazine. One flip over and you're looking at a perfectly loaded magazine. Pop this bad boy back on and we're back in the game. So, where you want to be, David? You want more? We could go up five bar, and you're probably going to see 950 or so. Let's try that. Okay. I, I don't see any need to go too far. Okay. Um, maybe balance between the power and the air consumption? Yeah, that's where I like to be. Is that 600 or 700 millimeters? 700. 700? Yeah, so, I mean, we could, we could be shooting these over 1,000 feet per second really easy. 965 is the magic increase, number. Too. Yeah. 700 millimeter, buddy. What's that? 960 to 965 is the magic number with that 700 millimeter. 34 so. heavies. Yeah. Well, we can go there. Turn it down if it's a problem. But I don't yeah. think it's a problem. Consistency wise, I think that's going to be okay. your closest. <clears throat> but that's what tuning is all about. Yeah, you got to find mean, out. You're able to play with whatever you want to. You know? Oh, it's amazing. All right, so we've got the reg set at 130 now. That's unbelievable, man. It's shooting those numbers with a reg at 130. I know. Remember, I... we had to have our regs up at 170. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had mine at 180 for a little while. 
<laughs> These new power like, plants ah, are crazy. There's nothing we can't fix. Let's just turn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's nothing Ernest can't fix. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now the reg is fighting the hammer, so we gotta up our hammer spring tension to take advantage of that higher reg. Alright, let's see what that did. How's that wheel feel, bud? It's good. It, there's no way we're even close with that blow okay. on the last night. Sounds empty. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like to give them a chance. How are you doing on air? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's where you learned it. We from. still got plenty. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I like I like to give them a chance, give them a boring shot, and then I don't feel so bad when the feathers <laughs> fly. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys ever want to check if you're cocked or not, tension starts like right here. So when you'll see, if you watch our videos closely, you'll probably see a lot, like before we go to take a shot, we'll pull back a little. And if we feel tension there, we know that we haven't loaded around. But if it's back all the way, <coughs> you got it there, it's just, it's just free. And if you stop right at like just before 90, it won't index the magazine and double feed. If you go back and you hear that mag rotate, then you gotta take it out, fire that single shot, put the mag back in. But that's a trick that we use a lot, is just to, you know, it's free floating here, and we know that it's cocked, or if we were to decock this, see how it's got tension there? You know, bring it back, nothing, it just free floats. Good way to check your gun without having to uh, look down the barrel. <laughs> and we let right. Steve do that for us. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, feet per second. 951. 900. You can feel the difference yeah, in the yeah. And you can hear it, it's like sharper. Yeah. 935. 958. 940. Stolen spot, I think. Yeah, but. I think, I don't know if we could do it with a hammer. You could try maybe two turns to see if it'll change anything. But if it doesn't, then we'd have to do the reg for sure. I would only, yeah, try a couple. Cause I mean, who knows where the hammer was set. Right. Initially, it's not like we have a reference point. I could feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe it. 953. 949. So I think we're still, because it's still climbing. Huh? How are you on air, bud? I mean, we still have plenty, but we'll put some in now just to make sure in case there's a difference in the gauges. But yeah, we've got the reg set at 130. That's still over 150. So, so I would say <laughs> you got to go up with the reg a little more, bud, if you want that, because you want to get this at like 970, so yeah, we can turn the valve up top down to the third line. Just under 140 now, which I know sounds pretty high, but remember that we are shooting heavies and we're trying to get them up to like 960. So it's not like it has to be there. I mean, the gun would have shot great at like a buck 10, uh, but you know, we want it. We want power, baby. 
Keith, the other thing I noticed is every time you made an adjustment on the gun, you take the mag out. Yeah, that's so that people on YouTube don't scream at me. There we go. No. There you go. I mean, I know that 140 is, that's higher than what I was thinking we were gonna do with the power plant, but even at 180, I couldn't get my crown to go that high. Yeah. So that's uh, quite an improvement. I know that a ton of people have done videos on the power plenum. I haven't, and this is the first power plenum that I've tuned, so excuse me if I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Especially when Dave's paying for the pellets. Yeah, he's paying Keep for shooting. the pellets. I mean, I'm giving them air. I'll tune your gun for you, sir. Five, ten, yeah. <laughs> Richard from JSB. I hope you're watching this, buddy. Check your round play. I don't know how many more rounds you got in there. As long as it works. Yeah, as long as she's coming. 956. It's really consistent right there, but yeah. if we turn down to the third line, I'm thinking we're going to land, I don't know, 940 ish. So we can go up with the reg more mm -hmm. and uh, see what she does. Safety. <laughs> All right, we're at 145 bar now, so we will see what she does now. My guess is we're done uh, in terms of getting the speed that we want, and we'll see if we're truly done when we put it on paper. But most of the time, especially with pellets, it's like if it's going to be consistent, it's going to shoot. You know, with slugs, they're a little bit more finicky, I've found, and you have to get consistency and then you, you might need to go to like the next the next uh, node that it's actually shooting well at. But I bet you with, with pellets and a pellet liner, it's just, if you got consistent speed, you're pretty much gonna group. 937. 972. 956. 949. I had to turn the valve in a little bit. See if we can get some more consistent numbers. See, the thing to remember when you're tuning guns, you make changes. It's gonna take a little time for those changes to settle in. So you don't want to rush into changing stuff back and forth. It's you know you want to save pellets when you're you know trying to tune a gun, but you really do need to put the gun through a bunch of cycles to see where it's going to settle in. And I'd say we're going to yeah. settle in nicely. Now. Nine hundred forty-six. Made a liar out of me. No, there we go. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we're going to call that done for harmonic tuning in terms of is the gun happy, is it producing consistent results. Um, now we're going to get a quick zero on this gun so we can fire it for groups and see how it shoots. Alright, so now what we're going to do is take advantage of these Eagle Vision rings. The FX rings work the same way. We're going to find the bottom of the elevation on the scope. Then I come up about 10 clicks. Um, and then we're gonna adjust the scope to the point of impact. And what that's gonna do is allow us to have maximum available up and down without stressing the scope by being all the way at the bottom. So all the way down. Okay, so now we've hit bottom. One, two, three, four, five, whatever, somewhere in there. And I'm guaranteeing you when I pull the trigger on target, it's not even gonna be close. But that's okay because we're gonna loosen these and tilt the scope until it matches where the zero is and then we'll lock it down and fine tune. This scope is an Athlon Ares and I think it's 110 MOA available. Yes. So, you know, when you go down like I just did and then maximize your range with these rings, what you're essentially doing is gaining all of them. If you were to just zero it wherever as it's sitting flush, you might be giving up 50 MOA of elevation. So what you've just done with the turrets is raise them all, elevate them to their highest point? The lowest point. 
the basically. lowest point. You yeah, put them so, to their lowest yeah, so, point. Because we want to have all of this available up. We just want to look at this. You know, crank, 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 crank. We want to be able to go all the way up. And when we go all the way up like that, what we're doing is we're raising the, the impact point. So what we want to do when we're sighting in is be all the way down to leave that available for later. So that is the actual bottom of the scope. Now we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there, just so that you have a little bit of cushion and you're not forcing the scope down every time you hit the zero. And then we're gonna tilt it and so make that hit. Step one. Step one, zero the scope down all the way at the bottom. Then Bring come up ten. about 10, 10 clicks. Perfect. Step two, mess with these so that we can get it reasonably close. Um, to the point of impact and what I usually do is I have wherever the scope is sitting I'll have it hit just a little bit low so that I can come up with the dial because we've already pretty much taken away all of the down availability so the last thing you want to be doing is trying to go down when you're already bottomed hey no problem guys we're not trying to film over here or anything oh you can hear us yeah do you have a Snickers bar I'm not feeling like myself <laughs> <laughs> We've got these set such that you can move them, but they kind of want to stick together. Actually, that's a little bit less than I would like. You just want, you want enough friction to hold it, but you still want to be able to move it so that you can get it. So maybe that's about right. A little trial and error. Um, we are going to fire a shot into the dirt bank there, and we don't need to do it at 30 power, that's for sure. Okay, so we're going to see where we land. Didn't hit the dirt at all. Okay, way at the top. So now that we have seen where it hit, I'm going to try and hold the gun with the crosshairs locked on what I was aiming at, and then adjust the scope without moving the gun up to where it hit. Lock it in right there. The scope moved a little bit when you did it, but let's see what we got. Perfect, it's still just a little bit low. You want to find Yeah, so sometimes if you're really strong, you can break these like Norm does. <laughs> but if you're my size, you can pretty much hammer on them. And when it's not your gun? Yeah, then you really just go at it, man. Go get the bar. Go get the six <laughs> yeah. foot bar extension. <laughs> can't, Dave's back, Dave's back. Uh -huh. Oh, dang. And so just so everybody else knows in YouTube land, with the wind chill out today, it's three degrees. Yeah, so we're tuning from inside and I'm wasting the heat out the door and I don't care. Yeah. And make sure that it did not move. Perfect, it's still low. Um, so now what we're gonna do is zero the gun. We're gonna bring our turret up to match our point of aim and then we'll you know, worry about left and right then. But that's how you get towards the bottom. It's a great thing to do so that you get to take advantage of the whole dang scope. The door's shut. I think we have ghosts in here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, so let's crank her up a little bit. See where we land. Nailed the little pebble. So the wind is pushing it just a little bit, I think. I think it's actually pretty close to being zeroed. Now, one thing we're missing here, Dave, you got those little screws that go here to lock it? They go in this hole over here, and it's just one more pressure point that locks. So these actually butt up against the center rail there, and it's gonna keep everything right where you left it. Um, I don't even bother with Loctite. I trust these a lot. and. It works so good. I don't think we've ever had one move except for the one that, like I said, Norm broke the screw head right off. <laughs> but you know, you look at Norm's hands and uh, you'll know why. Yeah, that's it, so that's done. And you can actually see it. We didn't even need that big of a gap. Little, little angles make big differences. So, you know, you don't have to go crazy, but your gun and scope height and everything will let you know what you gotta do. So, step one, bottom out the turret. Step two, go ahead and get it hitting just under, lock it down, and then we'll come up for the zero. All right, so now we're gonna fine tune the zero 
and also uh, make sure that we're actually shooting good groups. So it's freezing out. We're not going outside. Let's show them what we're doing. <laughs> Put them here, so you know, no, no big deal. Just Out shoot the door, get shoot that door. Fire. You can only do this kind of thing when you're in the country and you're not worried about people walking around. Yeah, I think uh, you'll be happy with that, Dave. You're gonna have to shoot it though to, to finalize it because sometimes, uh, you know, people hold the gun a little different on the shoulder. Yeah. But, uh... Top target. Yeah, so this, you know, it's really windy out here too, so I, I'm not saying that that's the best group it's gonna do, um, but I don't know how many that was. It had to be at least 10, 15. At least 10, 15. Yeah. That's a three shot. But like, if you look at this, you know, that's a three-shot group, which with this wind, I'm not upset about that at all. So I'm going to call your 957 feet per second to be that good. So if you're happy, you want to shoot some? That's a lot of dead pigeons. That's a lot of dead pigeons. <laughs> all right, so David's going to shoot his tune gun for the first time, and we will see how we like it. Sweet. So we're going to re-zero your turrets right there. And on a calm day, I would readdress your windage just to make sure. But at 35, we shouldn't have to worry about the up-down too much. And we're going to call that job done. Happy? Happy. Happy Thanks. with your impact? Oh, yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. See, that's all you guys got to do is message us and then come over and we'll tune your gun for free. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just kidding. I'm whoa. just kidding. <laughs> Think about what you no, just said No there. freaking way. Think about what you just <laughs> this said is a there. special case. Can't hide. Can't hide. Three, two. Done. Done, done.